church was built in 1921. All the native sandstone was built by U.S. Steel. Statuary is beautiful. Very beautiful. This is looking toward the back. These old style confessional booths. I've never seen one of these before. Yeah. Only in movies. He also pastors Harlan and Cumberland and shares. This is from the balcony. The organ. The father told me that during the days of the cold camp, there'd be three services here and it would be completely packed, standing room only, several hundreds for each service. There were a lot of Catholics in lunch. Here's the ropes for the bells, which I, they don't chime. He said they may have to close the church as the older members are dying and there's not a lot of new ones moving in. He said there's problems with the Paying for the bills, the insurance, the heating. It's a shame because it's such a pretty church. Oh, I think all of them might. And I'm in the basement, I've never been down here. Here's a undercroft for parties. Can't see anything in here. I don't know where the light switch is. I see they have a kitchen over there. I'm outside now. There's the side that goes into the undercroft. The priest came out that door before service started. Walked along here and came up through here so he could process. There's some old stairs. He did tell me, by the way, that all the statuary was original. There's the bell tower. There's the cornerstone, 1921. It's all built out of native sandstone like the other buildings here. Incidentally, the priest told me that if, if the church has to close because there's not enough people to support it, that hopefully it'll be taken on as a historic site and then the uh, state will take over and will pay for the upkeep and maintenance and hopefully it'll be open for touring. There's our Holy Mother. Little reflection garden. This is the hospital. And it's now become its own little ministry that they call Solomon's Porch and they've turned it into a retreat center. I was in there once when I didn't have my camcorder before I got it. You can't go in it now because they, uh, I guess they have several hundred people from South Carolina staying in it right now, come and go. It was originally the hospital built by the company and then uh, 
when they opened the bigger hospital in Harlan, they, and uh, they had a clinic in Cumberland, they closed this down and the company moved in and used it for offices. Here's the church from below. This is Church Street I'm standing on, isn't it? I think it is. No church road, it runs right below it. It's a rainy overcast day here today. It was yesterday, it rained all day. The date is uh, October 3rd, I believe, 2004. This is my new F-150, thanks to Tiff. And I'm coming up on the clinic that I just learned was paid for by the United Mine Workers of America. Good for them. Some of these buildings around here. Uh huh. When uh, they had these old Italian stone masons. Right. See this stuff like this? Mm hmm. They cut this out of hillsides and creek banks. Really? It's beautiful. And uh, we, we uh, salvaged some of those stones from some of them buildings. Super. I'm going into the Methodist church with the pastor. What was your name, sir? Uh, Hugh Webb. Matthew Webb? Hugh. Hugh Webb. Hugh Webb. This is for classrooms? This is a uh, choir room. Uh-huh. Here's our Bible study room. Wow. This is the main sanctuary. Oh, it is pretty. Is, how much is original? Huh? How much of it's original? Uh, well, all of it is. Is it? All except these windows here mm -hmm. and these here. This, this here is original. What year was the church built? 1923, I think it was. Mm -hmm. Now, we had a fire in 77 that burned out all of that up there. We lost a, lost an organ because they had oh. the furnace was right under. That's where it started. It burned out all of that up there, and you know it went up them walls and didn't even touch the cross. That's amazing. It's amazing. Yeah, it's very pretty. Uh, how long have they been worshiping here? They've been worshiping continuously since it was built. Yeah, since 1924, I believe it is. And during the heyday of the town, was this church packed to standing room oh, only? It was packed to its capacity. Wow. And this is a plaque from our last pastor. He retired out of the Navy and he died with prostate problems. Well, it's beautiful. Thank you for letting me in. I appreciate well, it. Well, everybody that comes, it's just a beautiful given to us by one of the ladies of the first. I mean, and, Which uh, is your house, this white one? Huh? Which is your house? Well, it hits way on back. Oh, up way on back that way. Okay. You can't see it from here, but. Uh, it got to be such an expanse, his old house and everything. We just had to sell it, and we've been in the act of remodeling all of that in there. Okay, we're going to go inside and see the fellowship hall. Oh, this is pretty, and you can play ball down here too. Is this original too? Oh yeah, this was all built in 1937. We've got a stage up there. Yeah. This is our kitchen back in here. So does your church have a basement? Huh? Does the church have a basement? Yes, it does. Uh, they used to have Sunday school rooms down there years ago. Tell me, how come you guys got a fellowship on the Catholics didn't get one? Was it the membership? Were there more well, members? The membership or? built this. Yes. The membership built it. They built this. Yes. I see. Because I would have thought the Catholics had more people in the 30s. Well, as far probably as just wasn't the room over to expand. I see. Well, that's nice. I and bet you. I'm out to look here a lot of times and just do my walking up here. Uh huh. Just come up and open up and walk. Are these two lots right here? Mm hmm. They're empty. Oh, yeah, and built a parking lot over there. I've always thought this is pretty. This is Collier, uh, Looney Ridge, Looney Ridge, Looney Creek. What am I saying? This is Looney Creek. 
and I was I'm on the back side of the houses on Main Street I've always seen this and thought it was really pretty you can see the runoff coming up there it's coming out of a mine they had a portal up there and this is water runoff and there you can see it coming down through there and then to Looney Creek here I am uh, between the coal tipple and the blending bin and I'm gonna go in the bottom of the blending bin and this time I brought a lamp with me you can see it up there by the way you can see that floor grating with a hole in it I was up in there remember it's a long long way to fall there's the tipple it's cool and wet and it's fall and I'm gonna walk right up this little hill and then those stairs up there okay I'm going in a little bit winded there's some welding sticks there's some more Musty odor, there's a musty odor, lots of welding sticks. And I'm at the end. There's some stairs. Now these may be the uh, bottoms where the coal probably, that's my guess, is those big pits up above dump out into here and come down through there and then you can see there's a belt line. Was still has coal on it, unbelievable. Unbelievable, it still has cool on it. Mm-hmm, you can see that cool. I was hoping for a sign. You know, danger machinery or something like that sign. But there are none. Some old parts in there. Here's one of those really long shovels laying here on the ground. I think I'm gonna take it and give it to Bob for the museum. Crossing over to the other side. Just looking around to see what's over here. It's probably exactly like the other side. It's extremely dark. You get back here toward the back and there's no light whatsoever.
Every time I visit Lynch, I like to see something I haven't seen before. Never been in this area. Down there you can see the belt line that runs over to the tipple. Through there. That's it. There's my shovel there. This dirty one. Bob has this painted one in here. The dirty one behind it, I just stuck there. Got it out of the blending bin. A few minutes ago, stuck in the back of my pickup and drove it over here. Now it's part of the collection here. Feel good about that. There's a big tour going on here. There's Bob talking to a lady. And you put your car about down in here through four what did you call it? Did you call it? Oh, there. Yeah. 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 Discharge for Yeah. 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 One, one of the main things that we have to have in the coal mines is a way of communicating information that from underground to the outside and possibly from outside underground. We may have a ventilation problem or we don't have the air that we're required to have. We may have an injured party. We may have lost our electricity. Uh, any numerous uh, things. Supervision outside may want to know uh, how much production we have or, or where we're mining at right now, the status of anything. So how we do that is with a, a system of communications. It's just a mind phone, a telephone. Uh, the younger people don't know, the older ones will. It's, it's almost like a party line. Whatever's said on this phone is heard on every phone throughout the mines. Every unit that's mining coal underground has one of these close by. All your major uh, uh, stations underground, whether it's electricity, uh, dumping points, charging stations, they all have a phone. Whatever said on one's heard on all. And how they operate is just a series of buttons, a couple batteries in here. You'd push one, push another one. Outside, outside, anybody outside? I'm over here waiting on you. All right. I'm outside. Send, send me some help. <laughs> send me some help. Yeah, send me some help. So you may have any, any number of, of, of questions that you may want to relate to somebody or somebody to you. But it's a very important uh, piece of equipment. And it, it is a piece of equipment. And it's used as a piece of equipment. It's not something to call your buddy on the next section and say, what are you doing tonight or where are you going? Uh, pretty important that it's, it's strictly business. That's, that's that. Right? All right, sir. Just stay right here just a second. This mine's today with that yellow machine. Listen. That's that yellow machine we talked about outside. You can see this is the coal bed. This is coal from here to right there. Uh, the reason it's hollered, hollered out here so much is, is in the early days they shot this all out, and this was used as a as a uh, an entry to bring coal motors in and out. So the coal came in and out of this mine through a series of motors. But if we were going to open it today, the coal would start right here. You bring that yellow machine in with those augers, and he would start right here, augering his way in. And he would only take up to this seam of coal. And I said he could mine 40 feet today. So he would mine up to this, probably this location right here, a little bit further maybe, have stepped it off, but right here. And he would have, the roof would be right here. He would back it up towards you. He would set over and again start mining to where he would square it up. So we'd have this this uh, vacant area out of the coal seam. All right. All these mines are, are planned out by engineers, surveyors, geologists. They know what this mine is going to look like or should like look like when it's through. So this entry is going to be their main entry. So after he mines it, he goes to that entry over there, number two entry site. That drill that I said comes in, now he starts putting these roof bolts in. Now these have been here for many, many years holding up. As you can see, I talked about all the layers of rock. That's a layer, one, two, or there's three, four, five, five little layers of shale just in that two foot area. So it extends on up to there in different layers. So these roof bolts hold all those layers together. 
So that roof bolt basically would put up, and we'll see them in here four across until he gets to where they stop being, have stopped mining. He goes to where the next place is what we call not pinned, starts the process all over again. And they do that around the clock, basically. Might be two shifts or three shifts. Can you put a layer of cement over it? <coughs> Can you? No. What? All right, what, what we have here, and again, this, this is to be an exhibit uh, with uh, some rides and tours and all that stuff on, uh, like an amusement park. So the contractor came in and cleaned it up, did, did the initial work on it, sprayed a latex substance on it so that it fills all the little gaps and cracks to keep the rock from falling off. You can see it peeling. In a coal mine, good question, in a coal mine, though, in actuality, it does look sort of like, sort of like this white stuff here. Mm -hmm. What we do after we mine the coal, there's a, there's a, a process called rock dusting. Rock dusting is crushed limestone. And it's almost the consistency of powder, baking powder, flour. And they have a guy that comes in and he sprays it. He throws it on the mine floor, the roof, and the ribs simply to keep what I talked about a while ago, float dust down. Because it will also explode. I didn't talk about that. I talked about it being harmful to your lungs. Coal dust in the right atmospheric conditions, enough of it, given an ignition, an ignition source, it will also explode. So this rock dust keeps float dust down and prevents it, if it was to explode, keeps it from growing and growing and growing. Uh, continuing on. So once it gets to the rock dusty area, it will stop. So it would, a, a normal coal mine would look something like this. So this one, rest one minute. Stop right there. <laughs> uh, we're going to put men in here that got lights on. They're going to move slower like this. Eh? And they'll have uh, lights on them. And then here's another thing. You push a button and he's going to talk to you. They tell you what country he's from and how long he's working around and stuff like that. We've got nine places cut out in here. That, come to, that car will cost us better than 50000 But that car will haul all these one bunch at one time, see? You bring it back out here and put it on charge, it'll, it'll run on 442, so you have 442, 2810. Yeah. And then they shut this mine down in 62, and they went above here and opened 33 miles on top of the mountain. They core drilled it six foot round, 750 feet, they dropped the coal all the way down, hit on the vibrator belt. It's your design, go ahead. Yeah, that's what, that's, what you, that's what you see behind you, is part of that structure yeah. that, that the coal yeah. came out on. Initially, this mine's as, as You'll I see it when you come said out. a minute ago, the coal came out on the real coal. After 1963, 4, 5, it came out on this uh, conveyor belt, but the coal came from the, the coal seam of us. All right, now we're going to go underground. It's pretty damp in here because in the summertime, atmospheric conditions uh, create a lot of moisture in the mines. The, the uh, warm air from outside comes into a cooler mine. The moisture condenses, it collects on the mine roof, the ribs, and the floor. So it's going to be damp in here. In addition to that, uh, again, those hurricanes we've had dumped a lot of water on these mountains, and it all seeps down into uh, different uh, parts of the mines, and we've got pumps going. You'll hear them going. So it's going to be damp in here. So watch your footing as far as uh, slipping and tripping. Okay? All right, the small group. Now, is there, are there bats in here? There's the rail. There are. No there are. The two biggest critters that are in coal mines are bats and rats. But you're safe right, you're safe right here. But bats and rats are the biggest thing found in coal mines. All right, now what, where we're at right here, the, the contractor two years ago, two years ago this, this wall would have been solid right through here. This coal would have still been in this cross cut right here. Now, this is what an area would look like after that mining machine we talked about extracted all that coal. You can see it's not too wide. Uh, it's, it's only up to the edge of the, the main roof, not like out here. And you can see that he, he turned that coal mining machine, that cutting machine, in on an angle. And you can see that, that head I was talking about, how it scrolled into this coal. That was, it, it was cutting these seams of coal. And he's, he's controlling those little levers making that thing square around until he gets basically right here. He's got that machine turned. He's got it up to here where he wants it. He backs it over, and then he sits over pretty much pretty square. And he cuts this rib pretty straight down from there to get 
And again, these, these entries are the maximum is about 18 foot wide is what you're allowed to lock. So he's taking it, it took him a couple times to get this connected up to this other wall over here. So it's taking a couple times to do that. Each, each time that he, he moved out, that roof building machine came in, and you can see where these new roof boats were installed. One, two, three, four. One guy put up two, another guy put up two. Moved up four foot, put four more. So that, that's how that, that's how this system works. So this matting you don't normally see in a coal mine. This is something special, just because there's going to be an exhibit. They do use something like this in a coal mine, but only in special cases because it's pretty costly to put up and time consuming. Those rocks are loose. That's a little bit of layers of shale. As I said, different layers of, of, of uh, rock make up their structure. Well, those, those layers of rock have layers of rock that make that layer up. So it's little fine layers of shale. Yeah. I just walk on up carefully. The environmental part of the coal, and that being the sulfur part of it. This is what sulfur looks like if it seeps from a coal mine over a period of time. That orange stuff is sulfur. It seeps out of those little cracks in the coal over many periods of years. Because what used to be over here was a tunnel that allowed the, the workers in the early days to avoid coming over here where the, the motors and the cars were coming out and walk around that congested area into a safe spot up here and go, go about the business up there. But that's what sulfur looks like in a coal mine. It's a little orange. Okay, of course, you see the water, and it, it accumulates in a lot of coal mines. And uh, this, is, this is a pretty good working height for a, a coal miner. Not too bad. Uh, around 60 inches. Good height. I was fortunate enough to work in a coal seam that was 10, 11, 12 foot high for 25 years. But it was dangerous, but it was. It, Good on your back. This takes a toll on your back walking around. You'll see some lower spots on up here. Okay, any questions? You're here to learn. Ask them. All right. And the, when you were talking about this way right here, we need to take this more if you want to it's up here. Thanks. How far did this go? How far did it go, though? It went well, this went up to the, uh, up to the uh, car shop where they were. Work the car they had a car shop underground? Well, that's where your, uh, we call it a car shop. Mm -hmm. That's where your where they were your motors cars? and things like that. Yeah, motors. Pull the coal, they call them cars, but motors, electric motors and cars and stuff like that. And cars, what you ride in, you know. How big was the car shop? Was it just a hollowed out uh, room? It just hollowed out like this. It wasn't too big. No. Uh, somebody had a question. That couldn't make it too big. No. Yeah, too much concrete to have, to, I mean, too much rocks. And, these are those pipes I was thinking about. Yeah, these of. pipes here are where they had the trolley wall right here. See, you had your rails up through here right here. Uh-huh. And your motors went up through here and they had a trolley wall. And the trolley wall was hooked right in here, see. I see. And, and yeah, and that would be a full 40, son. You had to watch it. And did have no insulation on it. I see. No insulation. That's the same It's just a store, Jerry. And the same thing put the sand on the motor, see. makes up a block of coal this right here we walk around it's called a pillar and when we talk about robbing coal when, when we rob coal we would take out this entire block of coal in a certain method approved method by the government 
So you could extract this whole block of coal without putting up any of these roof bolts. That's the most dangerous part in the, in the coal operation. But you do it in a, in a system that's been proven over years and, and, and approved. Uh, if, if you two would, if you two, you know, just step back just a little bit, okay? Could you see this, see this rock right here? See how it breaks off? That's those layers of shale I was telling you about. A little bit. And that weather causes that, and a lot of people get hurt from that. All right, now you're looking at this entry right here. You can see it's pretty smooth. We don't have that meshing over there. This is, this is more like what you would see uh, in a typical coal mine. The, the layers of shale and the roof bolt. Now what you see back here, we talked about timbers. This, in the early days, they didn't have the roof bolts. They used a lot of timbers, or they didn't use anything at all, and they contributed to a lot of fatality. But they used timbers to support. And again, here's this layer of shale that has a huge crack in it. That's a dangerous rock right there, but now it's got this roof on in it. But you can see, had it not been for that, this thing would have fallen because it's, it's cracked all the way around, all the way, almost to the back side there. But that's really dangerous, and that rock can kill me. No question about it. It can kill me. Now, unfortunately, I had two, two of my friends are out there on that plaque you were looking at. There were three others that I knew. And how they died is just, if you would, step back. This little gentleman right here, step back. Yeah. Because what happened, they were in a situation just like you are. They had their backs turned to this area right here. Didn't have these uh, roof bolts in it. In the course of mining operations, the, the, uh, the whole system just, just changes. Everything changes because it's all, you're taking coal out, that weight is shifting back and forth. So a crack developed in an area similar to this right here, almost this thick. Those two gentlemen had their backs turned at different times, one in uh, 76 and the other one in uh, 97. But they had their backs turned to them. This thing broke loose, hit both of them in the back. I hate to say this, but he cut one boy in two, and the other boy I talked about, it crushed all his internal organs. Uh, this is this is the reason that we roof boat is to hold all these layers up. And this is the reason these are in here is to hold that bit. But it's, it's, roof conditions change constantly in the coal mines and it, it's, it's hazardous. All right, questions? A lot of different layers of rock. That's what I'm trying to tell you. It just it's not one one consistent piece of rock. All right, this He's asking what this is. I showed you a roof coat outside that had that plate, had a little nut on the end of it. Well, this is a different type of roof coat. Same principle. That's what's up here. This one doesn't have a nut. What it has is, is a, a tube of glue. You all heard of epoxy glue. Two compounds mixed together. Makes a, a solid bond. That's what this principle is behind this. Has a big long tube of glue. Might be three foot, four foot. They drill the hole put the tube in there, put this in there, and they spin it for about 20 seconds until it hardens, hold it up there against the, the roof, and it sets up immediately. So, and then it can't come loose. It's, it's there for, until it, the geologic conditions make it come down. All right, we talked a little bit about outside, about quality of coal. Different layers of coal making one seam. All right, this is one seam of coal, but if you look, and we talked about cleaning coal, while we clean coal, wash it, is to get the debris out of it. This coal has a lot of mud on the very bottom, a lot of trash. It wasn't formed very well over a period of time. So that's pretty trash. It's not a good quality of coal right here. It is up here. So from here, this would be the next uh, period a development of this seam of coal. It started here, ended here for a short period of time, very short in geologic uh, periods. But you can see a little mud there. Came up to here almost the same, same time frame, but you see a little mud in there. And then the next one's up here. Now here's that sulfur I was talking about. You can see that in here. So you've got one, two, three different periods of evolution of this seam of coal. What's that y'all's that's that sulfur. It's coming at that orange. That's sulfur. I'm at the UMWA Union Hall. It's uh, between Cumberland and 
and Benham. Look at that, District 19. District 19 don't exist anymore. United we stand, divided we fall. United Mine Workers of America. I guess they're going to close us down. Local 7425. I'm going to go in. See what I can see. This is the inside. There's Ed over there. Bob Collier used to sit there. This picture of John L. There's Sam Church. He was president after Arnold Miller, I believe. Thomas Kennedy. Don't know him. There's the charter. Nineteen thirty-seven. Look at that. Look at that. It's got John L. signature right on it. Oh, this right here is worth money, buddy. No doubt of that. I'm on Black Mountain, heading toward the 32 mine. I've been hiking, I'd say, 20 minutes, maybe been pretty much flat like this went downhill some back at the toward the beginning which I know will be uphill on the way out but wasn't bad uh, I understand that the bathhouse is still here and uh, some of the other structures from when US Steel was mining up here here's uh, some sort of house on the side Of course, I always worry about snakes. Especially since Bob Collier made me paranoid about them. I'm going to go over here and look at this building. I don't see any snakes. Watching the ground, of course. I'd say this was some kind of a shop, maybe. Oh, yeah, it's got rails on the floor there. Okay. 
at the back door. Hope there's more to see than this. I don't even know what this building is. I'm sure that's not the bathhouse. Bathhouse would be much larger. So I'm gonna keep going on down the road. Let's see what we can see. Okay. Now I'm probably another 20 minutes from that other structure you just seen. I'd say this here is the bathhouse. I'd say I've been walking pretty close to an hour all together. I don't know. 50 minutes. I didn't think to look at my watch. I'd say it's two, two or two and a half miles. Something like that from the main road. Look at that view. Black Mountain. I didn't even see this building. It's completely covered. Let's go over here first. Yeah, buddy, I'd say this is the bathhouse right here, without a doubt. There's a... I think these are... I think those are lights. Right there. Hanging down, but you see all the pulleys on the roof? It's for hoisting up your basket with your stuff in it. numbers on the walls but there's tights lights on the ceiling no shower heads the toes used to be a bathroom busted up toilets and urinals it's a shame people vandalize like they do I know that's what these pulleys are for on the roof, is for those baskets. You willing to bet? It's a long hallway here. See anything in these rooms? That's where I came in. 
Oh, there's a downstairs. Might be worth investigating. Can't never tell. This is back where I came through when I first came in. Bunch of old shelves. Stairs up here. Off the top of my head, I don't even know the date that 32 ran. I'd say this was the bathhouse and offices. Just for a guess, I wouldn't know. Safeco. I didn't know this other building was here either. It's all covered by trees. Here's this room with night shot. Going back down the stairs. I do believe I'll go check out that other building over there just to see what it is. Here's some bricks I can walk on. There's cattails growing out here. Oh, they're just little separate rooms, it looks like. There's another one. Roof gone. There's a two on the door, this one.
going in the door here. It's an old cook machine. Danger, do not stand under crane loads. It's like a bathroom. Look at these stairs, these are the stairs going down all overgrown with weeds. We're safely back in another building. This is neat. I'm glad I walked up here. If I get out of here without getting in any trouble. There's the stairs going down to the basement I mentioned. I mean, you know why I'm going down there. Well, let's walk over and look at these buildings over here. I see at least three. That'd be a black mountain over there. what this building is and it's also grown up turns out it's not a building at all but a wall this little building may be where they kept explosives so I could be near the a portal but going through some jagged weeds that could be a portal right there Kentucky law orders them to seal the portals up when they're done, so even if that is a portal, I couldn't get in. I'd guess this is a machine shop. It says right on there, keep out no admittance. There's a, an old sign you can't read in case of fire. Section A, B, C. Yeah, look at these rails. There's some old lockers. It's definitely a machine shop. See here, this is where you get underneath. Get underneath and work on the cars. So I'll fill down with water. Look at that motor room. Mm -hmm. Get underneath these and work on the cars. Oh, the bathroom.
believe I'll stop here and take a couple still pictures. Here's a little building. This is the back side of that machine shop. And the road goes on, but I don't believe I'm going to go any further. I figure that the majority of the buildings that are up here are right here in this little cluster. The machine shop, the bathhouse. And even if there's a maybe a portal down there that's sealed up. Pretty view. This is walking away from the machine shop which is behind me. There's rail spikes. Look at that ceiling's collapsed. Had a low ceiling with sheetrock. Had tile on the floor. It was probably somebody's office. And that goes into the that door goes over to the machine shop the window. This is another building here. You can see the bathhouse right there. This is running alongside of machine shop. In fact, you can see the machine shop through there. I think I worry about snakes and don't want to walk through those plants. You see me mention snakes, but rattlesnakes and copperheads are a real problem. A lot of people kill rattlesnakes and copperheads, and they can kill a man, so. Now I got my Ruger Vaquero along with me with some snake shot in it. So if I saw a snake, I'd shoot it. I'm glad I came up here. I'm going to head back now. There's that building. I'm not going to go any further. And I have 10 till 2. The road looks like this a lot of the times you're hiking. Sometimes it's overgrown. There are some uh, trees laying down where you couldn't drive through here. At least not now without coming up and removing them. So, if I remember, I'll look at my watch when I get back out to my truck, see how long it took me to walk it. I'm betting it was a good 45, 50 minutes. See, here's part of it that's probably got blacktop underneath it, but you can't see it. A lot of it was like this, the walk. And I watch the uh, blacktop for snakes because 
they come out in the afternoon and sun themselves. Blacktop picks up heat from the sun. So, I've enjoyed coming up here. Just want to make it out of here safe and sound. There's a no trespassing sign from the Penn Virginia Coal Company. Now, uh, those are out on 160 when you come onto this road. And then I noticed when I was crossing up here, it looked like I was entering someone else's property because there, there's a marker there, but there's red dots on some trees and a red line painted across the road, which I figured was a property marker. I'm probably right, right there. You see that? And I think this is coming back onto the Penn Virginia's land, which I guess theoretically I'm trespassing, but I'm just walking back to my truck. There's the red marks on the trees. When I was younger, I used to take those kind of signs. And uh, if I wasn't a Christian, I'd taken that one, slide it right off the tree. I used to do that when I was younger, but not anymore. That'd be stealing. And uh, all I'm doing up here is looking around. Although I did pick up that sign off that Coke machine about walking under a crane or whatever. But uh, that's not theft. I'll go down and show it to Bob Lunsford and offer it to him for the museum, which is all affiliated with Lynch, U.S. Steel and all that. See this road? You just keep walking this. I'm walking faster on the way out than I was on the way in. I was looking around a lot more, watching the ground a lot more. Something about walking where you already been, you feel a little safer. You can see these trees going right across the road. Caused me to walk through the weeds. Which you worry about snakes. You can see more right there and then the road goes on. There they are behind me. Made it safely over them. See wildflowers on the edge. Here's this one bathhouse. Not bathhouse. This, uh, what is this? First building I came into, and it's about eight after two, so it was about 20 minutes from here to those others, like I said. Here's where the road's got water standing on it. Actually, it's moving, I shouldn't say standing. And I was noticing some little tadpoles or something in it. You can see where it's eroded the blacktop. Right through there, made a channel. This is a logging truck. Doing lots of logging. I'm heading back into Lynch. Made it safe, thank you. It's 2.30, so it took me 40 minutes to walk from the bathhouse area out here to my truck. This is on 32. Uh the portal is right back through here. Yeah, that's 32 And this is a sign that said safety first, which I saw. And this is a bathhouse, and these are offices. And this is this other building where they stored stuff. We had some. I've been through all these. That's why I straightened them back up. Where they were. Safety first consideration, I see. I saw part of that was overgrown with weeds.
Yeah. There's the offices in the bathhouse. One thirty-two. Won't be the last. Uh, what, okay. what was the name of that United Auto Supply? And the theater there next Union to Union Supply. Union Supply. Union Supply. The yeah, car the gas store. station. At Union Supply. The store. Yeah. That's the theater. Uh, no, that's the service station. Well, the service station. Supply. What's what was the name of the service station? Just Link United. Link Service Service Station. All I know. That belonged to Union Supply. Too. Yeah, it was born to Union Supply. This old miner, George, explained 32 to me that this is the road right here uh, that comes, winds around off of 160 up at the top of Black Mountain. This is where I parked my truck that goes into Virginia. And he said over here, this was a parking lot. He said this was a, this little house that I passed back here was a compression for air compressors where they made air, I guess, or compressed air. And then further down, there was a parking lot, a large parking lot. And he, this little, this is the bathhouse right here. And the line that's drawn there separates the bathhouse from the offices. That's where the offices were. And there's a hall there. Remember, I was walking through there. And then this is the storage area where they stored stuff. And then here you have the machine shop. This right here, that sign, is a sign that says safety the first consideration. And there's your little house for the dynamite, for powder and caps, and then the portal. So the portal was right there between the bathhouse and the machine shop. I was right that that was the portal. It was all overgrown real bad with weeds. So there was nothing to see there anyway. He said if I'd have taken this road down path, the machine shop, there was no other building. So I did right in turning around. And then on this other map that he drew me, This right here is a road that goes to the radar tower and the high point. And this is the road I took. I walked. You come down here to the buildings at 32. And uh, he said then there was tunnels. And the, the coal was trucked all the way on cars to the dump, which was, there was a coal dump up there on the top of that ridge where the cars would, the bottoms would open up. The bottoms would open up on them. And the coal would go down onto a belt line and then that belt line came on down the mountain and I went into the blending bin over there which is all grown over with trees now I got some pictures there's Looney Creek look at those rail ties that's where the train ran right along there to Benham Yeah, you can see those rail, rail ties sticking out. And there's the water. Bob Collier told me this was a bridge that went over to the camp over there. That's the foundation for the bridge. The bridge is gone. Over Collier Creek. Or Collier Creek. Looney Creek. He said there's steps going up the mountain, but I don't see them. Sure don't.